We got Keyboard Warriors hot take segment brought to you by our good friends at Barrel Theory Beer Company. Go find them at the X, section 105 if you want the crowler of the day, the floor of late. Or hit section 112, 217, or club level 36 if you want to crush some raindrops. A delicious staple for them, another IPA. Um, Hot takes this week, Joe. We got two of them. One of them, I'm actually really curious where you stand. And uh, if you haven't seen the video, then my bad for not showing it previously. But did you catch the little uh, exchange with uh, Brady Kachuk and one Lane Hudson where uh, Hudson was kind of doing the head fakes and Brady kind of like got a little bit too into it there? Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen a lot of people making the comment that like this is why the Senators aren't winning, like, this guy can't be the leader of the organization. Like he can't keep his cool. He's hot headed. He's erratic. Like he he's the problem. What did you think about this whole exchange? Like, was it a bad thing, bad look for Brady Kachuk or not? I mean, I mean, it didn't come across well, I guess in that particular scenario, like I don't have a big problem with it though. I don't really have like, is a rookie, right? Lane Hudson's a terrific player, a young player that's going to be so good in this league. But I think it's just as for good or bad, it's the natural order of things for veteran players in league to chirp younger players in league for doing things, um, a little bit of swag to it. Um, so I, I don't think it was an awful look by Brady Kachuk. Like I don't, it didn't really bother me too much, whatever like that, but like, I can see where Montreal fans would have been ticked off, but like people went through all this. His fans combat. were ticked off. Yeah. I, I'm going the opposite direction on this. I'm going to be completely honest. I think it's a big nothing burger that people want to yeah. be a thing. I think Brady Kachuk is just like being a jester there. He's like, Oh, you're going to go back and forth. Oh, I'm going to do it too. Like, yeah. I think he's just messing around. I think that's a big part of Brady's game, the Ch- Kachuk's in general, like or Matthew Kachuk's game too. All of them, like yeah. I just don't, I don't think he's, yeah, I don't think they're gonna think about this four days from now. I think there's people who gave Trevor Zegers so much shit all the first couple of years for <laughs> stuff, and that's even different, you know, right? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I don't think that's a big deal in my mind. I don't think Lane Hudson gives a shit either. Yeah, it, it's business as usual for him. Big nothing burger. Now, if the next game they play, there's like further like antics between Kachuk and Hudson. Maybe I'll revise my take, but I, I think this is, I kind of liked it from Brady, to be honest. I thought it was kind of funny, but uh, all right. Take number two. This one is uh, coming from yours. Truly. The Colorado Avalanche are going to aggressively overpay to the point that the Wild have no choice but to trade Philip Gustafson to them. What is overpay? It's probably going to start with a first. I mean, to get a first round pick, like it's hard to turn that down as part of a package. Like, I think there are going to be goal. There are going to be teams that are star for goalies. That I think, if Gustafson continues his trend of playing like he is, there'll be a market, really good market for him. More of a but market. That's the for definition him. of star for goalie, is it not? Mm-hmm. Colorado. They've they've scored four goals in both of their first two games. They were getting outscored fifteen to eight. Yeah. Because their goalies are that incompetent, and maybe like Anunen is going to be the solution. Like I, I do think there's some promise for that kid, but if he can't figure it out quick and Georgiev continues to be like this. They have no choice. They can't forfeit this season. And they're in a weird cap spot. Gustafson's affordable. And he is a great solution for them to get them a two-year bridge before they need to go back and scramble their salary cap yet again. I it's tough to make an in-division trade like this, especially like the bad blood between the two teams. But if it's starting with a first and there's a little uh extra sweetener. It, it could make sense for both teams because even though it's not good for the wild and fans are weird, maybe they still want this just because it at least solves your three goalie dilemma. You're going to have wall learning from flurry, like management and all the fans were hoping for. 
I just personally have thought since the end of last season, I want Gustafson and Wallstead to be the tandem next year. But if yeah. a team's willing to pay up, who's to say? Well, like, and that's my counter argument is like, you trade him all of a sudden you put yourself in a difficult position of mm -hmm. having, you know, flurry in his last year. Right. And we'll see how his season goes. He came off a rough year last year and a guy with three NHL starts. Uh, right. And then who's the guy who's going to play with wall set next year. Like he wall going to come in and play 60 games as a rookie as a next year. Like it almost like fits so well to have Gustafson and wall set wall set next season at a cap hit combined of what, like five and a half or 6 million or something like that, yeah. you know, um, it's almost the most ideal situation to have because yeah. it would, could have been this year if they didn't resign in flurry. Right. It could have been. I 100% agree with you, Joe, yeah. my counter argument, why'd they try to trade him this summer? Well, they tried to trade him this summer because they decided to sign Andre Mark Andre flurry before that. And they wanted but to play. He is still signed. I understand where you're coming from. I'm just saying I did, I did not put him in the trade market. I did not decide to try to trade him in the summer. It's not my decision. I'm oh, just we're on that, the same page. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm saying from a management perspective. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, both of those guys came off down years. They they made the decision to go with Flurry, And once you did that, you committed to Marc-Andre Fleury. And uh, you put yourself in a situation where you had to make tough decisions on, okay, well, if they want a well set to play, but you can't. There's only one net and three goalies. So that's where Gustafson had probably more of the trade value and a guy you theory can move, but there wasn't the market for him. There might be a market for him this fall or this, this trade deadline. But my point is that the wild, unless there's another goalie that's ready to come in, the wild are in a better position. If next year it's Volstead and Gustafson, right? Yeah. And, and they're in a better situation a year from now if Gustafson has the year he's capable of having and they make the playoffs and they win a round. Right. So if you yeah. end up in like, so I guess in this part of this five-year plan, big picture thing, if you want to be a competitive team, the wild are a better team with Philip Gustafson now than they are with a first round pick now. Right. For that. Yeah. So, you know, you're kind of, they're not in a rebuilding mode, right. They're not in that situation. They're not, you know, so I don't know. My, no, best... no, and I'm, I'm not coming at you, Joe. Like, I think you and I view the situation the exact same. My, my like cheekiness here is that management, like if they couldn't move in this summer, there had to be like something in the back of your mind. That's like, Hey, maybe this season we can trade him. If he's bad, mm -hmm. you can't trade him, but want to now he's good. You can trade him, but don't want to. Did we kind of have a dilemma coming into the season that since Gus wasn't traded in the summer, there really isn't a world where he's going to get traded during the season, right? Kind of. Is that is there truth to that thought? Well, like the trade value wasn't very high in the summertime either. Like right. you, you wouldn't be getting what's like now, if you're talking to me about a first round pick in a package, like, yeah, you have to think about that. Of course. Like sure. I wouldn't want to give them away in the summertime, but like, but the whole, the whole thing for me is like, they want to be competitive. They want to win a playoff round. And if let's say if Wallstead actually does get to play in the NHL level this year with barring injuries, he will. Let's say he's tearing it up and Flurry look looks good and the three goal systems tracking, and you decide in December the, the abs call you and all of a sudden that's the scenario. But if I'm looking at the situation I'm looking at now, I have a guy who's played three NHL games who's gonna be really good. I have a guy who's turning 40 next month, who's in the last year of his career, like what's better to prepare your future for is having a guy like him to win games now and also to prepare him for next year and like yeah. make the kid earn it. So, but yeah. yeah, I think if we're talking that scenario in December or January and Flurry's playing well and Wallstead's showing he can be number one right now, then by all means recoup all your picks, but I just be careful what you wish for when you're trading away guys. No, I, I completely agree. I'm just thinking what's Bill Guerin thinking. That's I hope he's yeah. thinking the way we are because I don't want Gustafson traded. I don't. <laughs> I just I can see it being tempting if he came out of the summer being like, 
hmm, is there a world where we can? But no, well, I like, I'm, and, I'm, hey, if he has a great year like this year and he has one year left in his deal, if he has another year that's similar to two years ago, all of a sudden he has a lot of trade value in the summertime and Wall said shows he can be a guy like, yeah. why wouldn't you consider it? But I, I just think for right now, if it's what we know right now, that I think he's kind of the best next bridge next year. Unless you think well, second play 55 games or 50 games. Oh, I think this year and next year, Gustafson's your best goalie for sure. I I think it's the perfect bridge towards Wallstead being the starter in a couple of years. I I am with you 100%. So I'm pissed off. I'm I'm getting pissed off at you right now for this. I know it's great. I kind of like this. Ooh, this this is our uh, Russo Lapanta moment. I like it. Um, no, this this one's gonna do fun on YouTube. I I'm excited to see some of the comments that come in with people uh, very strong on both sides of this argument. I'm sure. But uh, all right, we are on the same page. Let's just have that be clear. I do not want Gustafson gone. I just think it's gonna be interesting to watch whether or not he is. Um, <laughs>